Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening, everyone. The dust is settling on Will Hodgman's resignation, with the new Premier, Peter Gutwin, taking his new Cabinet to Government House to be officially sworn in. But as the Ministry gets to work, there are some challenges to come for the Government, including securing the future of a major employer. Standing together as a new government. A formal ceremony, switching up portfolios for six state ministers. I accepted the resignations and the Premier's recommendation and appointed a new minister and other ministers to new offices. It now remains for the ministers to be sworn into office. The reshuffle following Will Hodgman's recent resignation well, uh, as Premier. That leadership role now belonging to Peter Gutwin. Today welcoming a new face to his ministry. I, Jane Colleen Howard, do swear that I will faithfully execute the office of Minister for Racing and Minister for Sport and Recreation, so help me God. The new look cabinet, then quickly leaving to get the ball rolling. Well, good morning everyone and welcome to our first cabinet meeting. On the agenda, the State of the State's report, revealing Tasmania now ranks second on economic performance and first on relative population growth in Australia. Our government is in great shape. Uh, the ComSec report that was released uh, overnight indicates that uh, once again Tasmania's economy is going from strength to strength. But challenges remain. Labor says more needs to be done to boost employment, especially in regional areas. One big employer, the Temco smelter at Bell Bay, remains with an uncertain future. The party spent a lot of time up in Georgetown and talking with the community there. And we want to see those jobs stay in Tasmania. And we've met with the company and we've given our support to the government to do whatever it needs to do to keep those jobs here. Negotiations are currently underway between the business and Hydro Tasmania on a new electricity supply contract. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. The University of Tasmania has created a dedicated strike force to deal with any potential threat of the deadly coronavirus. The Education Hub contacting international students ahead of the academic year as the number of cases escalates worldwide. 4,000 cases worldwide with a rising death toll of more than 100 in China and on home soil leaders are taking no chances with the threat of coronavirus. The Australian government have put in place measures at our entry ports, airports and the like to screen for the presence of the virus. Five cases have been diagnosed in Australia, the latest a 21-year-old Chinese student in New South Wales. All five are uh, stable, uh, in isolation and being well cared for. Ahead of an influx of international students expected for the upcoming academic year, the University of Tasmania is actively monitoring the situation, saying it has plans and procedures to deal with the spread of illness and a team of senior leaders is meeting regularly to ensure the response is at an appropriate level. The university has also sent separate messages to Chinese academics warning anyone with fever or respiratory symptoms who has travelled to Wuhan in the last two weeks to see a doctor urgently. It comes as embassy officials held overnight crisis meetings in Beijing to discuss the deployment of consular personnel on the ground in Hubei province. This is essential uh, to assist us as we then consider the further options of the support that we can provide. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. A 59-year-old man from Dover has died after a head-on collision with a motorhome outside of Hobart yesterday evening. Police say the man was travelling south along the Hewan Highway when the vehicles crashed more than two kilometres north of Dover. The other driver, a 66-year-old German tourist, sustained minor injuries. It is summertime. There are a lot of vehicles on the road and accordingly people should really um, just take that little bit of extra care, allow for extra time and be aware that there will be extra vehicles on the road. The cause remains under investigation. A Mayfield man accused of starting a large fire on Tasmania's north coast last year has pleaded not guilty in court. Our reporter Letitia Wallace has the details. Jackson Cooper Cadman faced Launceston Magistrates Court today on a string of charges. 
The 21-year-old Mayfield man is facing serious charges in relation to an incident in November last year where he's accused of breaking into a home in Rochalee armed with two bricks, stealing a car from the property before setting it alight in bushland at Beechford several hours later. It's also alleged he set fire to vegetation at Stony Head the next day, which led to dozens of hectares of Defence Department land being burnt. Cadman was arrested later that day in sand dunes in relation to the alleged crimes. He's pleaded not guilty to all seven charges. Charges. Cadman remains on bail and is expected to stand trial in the Launceston Supreme Court in March. The temperature in Tasmania is set to soar over coming days as a northwesterly weather system sweeps over the state. From tomorrow, the Bureau of Meteorology has declared heatwave conditions through to the end of the week. Parts of the east coast will be affected by what's called an extreme heat wave, with temperatures forecast to head into the very high 30s. The conditions are also expected to raise the fire danger, triggering the Tasmania Fire Service to declare a total fire ban for southern, northern Midlands and Breakaday municipalities from Thursday until Saturday. The saying every vote counts has been reinforced by the incredibly close results of a council recount. The Electoral Commission redistributed the votes for Tanya Dennison today after she resigned from the Hobart City Council. Fifteen candidates were slowly excluded, but when it came down to the final two, just 1.77 votes separated them, with Will Coates the successor. A total of more than 23,000 votes were submitted for the election. A new multi-million dollar research hub aimed to grow Tasmania's seafood industry has today been launched. The Blue Economy Centre will use internationally recognised experts to investigate pressing issues clouding the local aquaculture sector, specifically climate change. As a result of climate change, the oceans are changing and we need to be able to adapt to that. The federal government says it hopes to grow the nation's aquaculture and seafood industries to $100 billion by 2030. Two local footballers are swapping the oval for the Midland Highway tomorrow ahead of a four-day charity run, getting in some last-minute conditioning and training ahead of what they're expecting to be a huge challenge, running from Utah Stadium in Launceston to Hobart's Prince's Wharf. We're breaking down the, the run down into 10 kilometre stints so we can actually keep and maintain our body. Um, but trying to recover and actually learn how to breathe properly and run at a certain te uh, tempo instead of actually just going full gung-ho. Mark and fellow runner Tim Banks are aiming to raise $10,000 for the Red Cross to aid interstate bushfire recovery efforts. Some of Tasmania's top Indigenous cricketers have landed in the Red Centre for the opening day of a national competition. The state has sent a side to the Indigenous Cricket Championships in pursuit of Tasmania's first title since 2001. I've been coming to Alice Springs for a long time now, we're pushing kind of 15 years-ish. Um, it's like coming back home. Um, you know, the, the quality of cricket is always exceptional. And Latrobe's Callan Moore certainly starred for the side with 87 runs in a win over Western Australia. The competition continues for the rest of the week. A Tasmanian seafaring program to help with youth development has received a welcome boost in the form of a $10,000 grant. The money will allow the Windward Bound Trust to upgrade vital wet weather gear, ensuring the safety of participants and volunteers for years to come. Working hard to get the windward bound into shipshape condition. Volunteer Emily knows all too well the important work done by those on board. In year 10 I came on a school camp and I loved it and I learned so much about myself and so I decided what a great way to, to spend six months after I finished high school. The ship is part of the Windward Bound Trust, a charity initiative providing youth development and work skills programs. The charity relies on grants and donations, today accepting one from the Future 2 Foundation, enabling them to upgrade vital staff safety equipment. We need to keep our trainees dry and our crew dry and safe, but this particular grant is going towards enabling us to replace our uh, existing foul weather gear, which is now well past its use by date. The work that Wingwood Bound do with the youth in the community is outstanding and something we felt would be um, something we'd be able to support.
With the old worn jackets replaced with fresh new gear, the ship's volunteers are looking forward to breaking them in on their next adventure. The voyages can be pretty tough and to be warm and to feel cuddly and safe in a jacket is definitely going to make us feel a lot better. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. There's a new push to preserve a group of Tasmanian structures described as rare and visually striking. The Heritage Council is proposing to add the Cornelian Bay boat sheds to the Heritage Register in one big listing. The 33 structures have been individually listed, but authorities say that doesn't recognise the significance of them as a group. Some of the sheds are believed to date back more than 100 years. The Heritage Council says they're representative of the important role of water-based recreation in Tasmanian cultural life. The Hobart Hurricanes face a selection dilemma for their elimination final against the Sydney Thunder. With David Miller departing the side, the doors open for a new number four in the batting lineup. It was the last result the Hurricanes needed to go their way. And the Heat's tournament is over. The Heat's loss handing the Hurricanes an unexpected home final, but the winning formula will need some adjustment as import David Miller departs the side, his contract expiring as planned at the end of the home and away season. So who comes in? Is it someone to come in and, and bat at six and we move um, McDermott up and Bailey up? Um, or is it someone to come in and replace him at four? And that'll dictate who that person is. Jake Doran and Tom Rogers are in the mix after missing out on the game against the Strikers, although the injured Riley Meredith is still a no-go. Then again, it might not even matter who bats at number four if openers Matthew Wade and Darcy Short get into the groove. That's Tizzy strutting too. Any time you can get those two out of the power play um, and still in, then, it's, then that's the danger zone for the opposition. The clash also shapes as an encore home crowd farewell for George Bailey. I suppose we have to just recycle all the articles and media stuff around his last game at home now. The final squad will likely be revealed tomorrow, while you can catch Thursday night's clash live on 7 Tasmania. Meanwhile, three Australians have been knocked out of the men's draw at the Burning International, while the number one seed, Japan's Taro Daniels, scraped through with a 7-6, 7-6 win. The news wasn't much better in the women's draw, with Aussie Destiny Ieva defeated by Great Britain's Nate Furt Baines in three sets. Good evening, 27 the maximum today at St Helens, Mariah Island and Hobart Airport, 25 in Hobart City, Launceston 24, Burnie 23 and Devonport 21. Overcast conditions this morning brought a few showers to western areas, Mount Reed 14 millimetres today. No rain in the east though, where friendly beaches had 25 degrees and Swansea 24. Ouse recorded 23 and Smithton 22. The Bass Strait Islands 21 today, low head 19, Strawn a coolish 16 degrees. Low cloud with the shower activity over the west and south, some high clouds streamed over the state as well, clearing the northeast. A tropical low is forming over northwest Queensland with thunderstorms over a large part of northeastern Australia. Now tomorrow, the high moves over Victoria and New South Wales. The monsoon trough and deepening low are there over the northern Queensland area. A cold front approaches western Australia. The winds west northwestly up to 20 knots, more northeastly over the east coast and winds increasing to 30 knots over southern waters in the afternoon. A strong wind warnings current for waters between Tasman Island and Sandy Cape. Hobart 4 tomorrow, a top of 27 degrees and partly cloudy, no rain. 24 for Jeeveston, the chance of rain, not much though. 26 the high for Bothwell and mostly sunny. Launceston mostly sunny and 26, 23 the top for Devonport, fine for Cressy as well and 29. Burnie can expect 23 and a partly cloudy day, a morning shower clearing from Strawn, 21, 21 also on King Island. 27 for St Helens, Swansea sunny, 28 and 26 for Orford. UV extreme all over tomorrow. Things a bit different on Thursday, a hot day and mostly sunny, temperatures in the low to mid 30s, showers developing on Friday afternoon and extending statewide after another hot day, Swansea expecting 39 and on Saturday, in a word, rain, contracting to the north and east in the evening. Partly cloudy in Perth tomorrow, very hot and sunny in Adelaide, cooler by comparison in Melbourne, just 29 there, some smoke haze over Canberra, partly cloudy in Sydney and Brisbane and stormy further north. Cloudy in Hobart, it's 23 at the moment, 22 in Launceston, partly cloudy in Devonport and 20 degrees. Joe, a very interesting week of weather coming up. It is all over the show. Thank you very much for that, Murph. That's all from the news team. Thanks for your company. Bye-bye.